Hi guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to Anglegeist. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your support. This is the daily forecast for the Greater Collective for Thursday, oh, sorry, for Friday, the 21st of August. This is not only set for that date. This is a message for the Greater Collective for the highest good. Therefore, if you're seeing it on a date that's not Friday, August 21st, that's okay. It still may hold some meaning or value for you. You can watch it at any point in time and hopefully receive some sort of benefit or validation, guidance, um, insight. So I don't believe that you have to watch it on the date that it was originally created for. All right, so let's see what's going on in the cards. I feel like we have a lot of kind of deep transformation happening this week. I hope that's the case with the um, new moon in, I believe, is it Virgo or Leo? It's in Virgo or Leo. But that new moon is definitely asking us to sort of release and let go of things that maybe are no longer available to us or are just not going to pan out the way that we think they are, that kind of a thing. So I think that there's something else brewing in the background is my feeling. I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but let's see what the cards show us today, and we will add to it. <clears throat> if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button at the end of the video, just letting me know that you're liking the content. I greatly appreciate it. You can also leave me a comment or a question. If you have any, feel free to do so. If you're interested in a private reading, you can contact my Facebook business page, and all of that is linked on the YouTube channel. <clears throat> All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, we saw this card last week, I believe. We didn't see it this week, correct? It was last week. We're seeing a lot of repeat cards in the middle of the month. So this is the Ace of Wands. To me, this is about sort of new paths, new opportunities opening up to us, new um, ideas. This could be uh, situations, directions. I feel like this crow, even though he's sort of facing to what would be, I guess, the right, right? That's opposite my left. <laughs> um, he's facing this way, which to me always kind of indicates looking back to the past and maybe reflecting. Uh, when I look at him looking at that, uh, that city, to me, it's almost like I feel like he might be saying goodbye to some sort of opportunity, some sort of possibility, something that he thought was maybe going to be uh, transformative or a workable solution, and it's maybe time to move on to something new or different. And that's sort of the inspiration that we see in the Ace of Wands, or the, the newness, the outside of the box thinking that comes along with the Aces. Wands is the element of spirit and, and sort of the element of fire, so there is an action orientation to the Wands. When we talk about the Ace of Wands, to me, there's an inspiration around taking action. Yesterday's cards was all about sort of like sort of easing into everything and letting things kind of um, die off or perceptions, uh, ways we interact with situations, whatever it might be for us that's outdated or no longer serving us, we need to sort of let that aspect of ourselves, maybe it's a way of thinking or a way of response a way of interacting in situations that's no longer serving us, we need to sort of allow that to die and to sort of ease into something new. This Ace of Wands, to me, feels like the, the bringing in of that newness as we sort of ease into the idea of the cycles of sort of death and, and creation or, or, you know, endings and beginnings. This is certainly a new beginning after that death card that we saw yesterday, right? So to me, this card always like brings about new beginnings, and there is this sort of, like we can see in this card, this golden path that opens up in front of us, this sort of um, idea that maybe uh, something has come along that we sort of maybe didn't necessarily, we weren't aware of. Um, we may need to look to the past a little bit to kind of reflect and say goodbye or close up a chapter. I kind of get that vibe with this card. I don't, I almost feel like this crow feels a little bit sad, but um, there is something new out there for them. There is something, that golden path to me speaks of promise, speaks of opportunity, speaks of excitement. So um, this is about kind of 
I don't know, in some ways I feel like he's taking an inventory, taking stock in sort of where he's placed his energy or his attentions and maybe has realized, okay, now it's time to pull those things away from those areas of my life and move them into something different. Um, and in doing that, it's sort of like a different kind of thinking or an outside of the box thinking. As he does that, he's able to kind of start to begin to make plans for something new, right? And that's certainly the energy of this ace. Uh, the focus to me with this ace, as I'm looking at the singular one that the crow seated upon, this speaks to the idea that the focus is solely on ourselves, not necessarily on anyone else. Um, and I don't mean that from a selfish, like, negative point of view. I mean that there's a, there's a truth in this card. There's a, um, a sort of a sense of inspiration that is sort of uh, self-focused that is powerful. And maybe not something that we're totally comfortable with doing always. Right? This is about kind of, I'm going to say it, being selfish in the sense that uh, we're putting ourselves and our desires, our needs first and foremost above anybody and everybody else. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that at this time. I feel like there's something actually probably um, healing or therapeutic from this card, right? To me, this feels like placing ourselves first is really doing not only ourselves a service, but those around us a service too. And we maybe aren't even aware of it. We might, some of us might feel some guilt or shame around putting ourselves first, but we kind of need to, is sort of the sense that I get from this part. If we want to get anything sort of accomplished that um, we think is out there for us. Does that make sense? Let's see what the Angels and Ancestors card says. So this is Shield Maiden. So this is Make Plans and Focus. We haven't seen her yet. I kind of like her. She's sort of strong. She's empowered. She's definitely facing towards what I would consider to be the future. She's a little bit guarded with that shield there. <laughs> but I like that she's young. There's an exuberance to her. We also have that sort of same fiery energy or that exuberance that we see in this Ace of Wands. I think that there is this opportunity here when I look at these two cards. One is reflecting to the past and kind of taking stock or inventory while the other is sort of gearing up for the move to the future right? And not the struggles that are there, because I don't want to predispose anybody to the idea that there are struggles, but I feel like the shield maiden, to me, has this kind of um, youth or exuberance that is set up to sort of face challenges as they may arise. I'm not saying that challenges are out there, but if they do come along, shield maiden feels to me as though she's ready to kind of... Uh, uh, um, go up against them, in a way. Does that make sense? And so, I don't want you guys um, <clears throat> going out there thinking, oh my god, I've got to fight off, you know, the environment or, or things getting in my way. It's not about that. It's about making plans and focus, right? So, being prepared for just about anything and everything. And I feel like she will. This is also about sort of trusting that in-the-moment, instinctual, intuitive guidance too that we also see in this ace of wands this is keeping the focus uh, when we say you know um make plans and focus the focus to me also feels like it needs to shift towards ourselves especially with the singularity of this ace of wands putting that focus on ourselves and what our desires are and how what our capabilities are and really trusting in those and utilizing those to be sort of maybe even our shield in some scenarios right or those being the things that sort of protect us as we move forward we have to um uh, trust that, right? Uh, I also see that this sword to me is taking me to the place and that even though this is an oracle deck, swords is always about the element of the mind or the symbol of air and air and fire work really well. So when I'm looking at these two cards, I feel like that wand and that sword that Shield Maiden is carrying kind of are giving me twins vibes in a way, right? They're almost giving me like an 11, you know, like a master number. We've got one and one. But fire feeds air and air, you know, uh, burns, uh, I'm sorry, air feeds fire and fire burns up air. So they're sort of, uh, they require each other to kind of uh, exist in a way, right? There's a, cycl a cyclical moment that happens between air and fire. So I feel like there is this bond between these two cards. They actually feel very, and I keep calling this crow a he, which feels sort of masculine to me, and that shield maiden feels almost like a queen of swords kind of card, right? She feels 
a little bit. She's definitely strong, empowered, and feminine, but she's being uh, smart, agile, right? She is uh, focused and making plans for the future, preparing herself for just about anything. But I don't want you guys to be, be preparing out of fear or worry or, you know, uh, impending doom or disaster. That's not the, the, the feeling that I get from this card. The feeling that I get from this card is anything is possible and we can uh, be ready and, and willing to kind of get in there and fight for it if need be, right? So those are the cards for the day. Let me see what's going on with the grounding stone and then I'll read you the definition from the book. Okay. So the grounding stone and what we should be focusing on and um, grounding in today is the idea and thought of joy. Joy is sort of hummingbird energy to me, and hummingbird is definitely an air element animal, right? Joy brings a lightness to everything. If any of us are saying goodbye to maybe certain opportunities, certain avenues that we thought we were pursuing, certain um, situations that we might have to redirect our energies and intentions right now, and there might be a little bit of nostalgia or romance or... Um, because uh, I kind of feel that with this Ace of Wands, right? I kind of feel like this crow, even though he's ready to take this newer path, uh, there is this sort of uh, closing of a chapter in some way that I, I, I don't know why I'm getting this vibe with this crow, but I feel like uh, focusing on this joy will keep things light, high vibration, positive, um, the opportunity here, and again, joy also kind of uh, keys in very nicely with yesterday's uh, stone of passion. To me, the two kind of go hand in hand. Uh, we want to kind of keep our goals and um, our ideas of what it is we desire, what it is we want, how it is we're going to create, go about creating it. Keep that at a level of fun, at a level of exuberance. Um, and I feel like we can do that through sort of grounding in the idea of what brings me joy. What is that noise? That was weird. Um, does this make my heart sing? Does this excite me? Does this, uh, does this seem, um, you know, fulfilling to me? And as we get like, as we ground in that, right, it brings about a lot of the same things that we saw throughout all of the grounding stones this week, like create and, um, uh, that sort of truth stone, all of these things, this is where we want to find this. Whatever, to me, when I look at this golden path and I look at this shield maiden saying, like, make plans and focus, it's like wherever we're putting our attention right now, and especially also with the new moon that just passed, this is where we get to start to make creations of new things to replace the things that are no longer working. So we need to kind of... Uh, what's the word, not initialize, but like um, initiate that uh, creation from this space of joy, right? There's a power in that. And as we focus and begin to make these plans, we want to do them from a place of excitement, right? New beginnings, new chapters opening up, new doors opening up. All right, so that is your forecast for the day. I hope that it makes sense. Oh, I got to read the definitions. What am I doing? Ace of Wands. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm like getting ready to leave. A little brain dead this morning. All right. Ace of Wands. The crow swoops from the sky and lands upon a wand marking the beginning of a path to a bright, shiny city in the distance. The wand brings the message of confirmation that the crow is on the right road and opportunities for success are laid out before her. The blooming spring flowers represent a fresh start. Floating through the air are little white feathers, bringing the message that the Ace of Wands represents not only a new beginning, but also one that is divinely guided. So trust that intuition right now, guys, and um, allow yourself to be guided, allow yourself to sort of uh, get excited and, um, and begin to like make plans and focus for something new and whatever needs to sort of pass away or, or move to the background or be let go of, allow it to be let go of with grace and dignity. Uh, 
So the make plans and focus is have a plan or strategy in place before moving forward. The shield maiden is the female knight in the shining armor. In Viking traditions, women were seen as equal to men and so joined them on their raids and fought with them on the battlefield. In this deck, the shield maiden brings a fiercely feminine energy, the power to be a warrior while retaining feminine sensitivity. She is ready to put her plan into action. She's ready to go into battle. Her medicine helps to us move beyond any unsettled feelings when our plans start to take shape and follow through with our strategies in order to be where we want to be. Shield Maiden worked together in times gone by to create shield walls of protection. So she also shows us how to work with others in order to bring our plans to fruition. Taking some time to assess what your next steps will be, all great warriors have a plan. You are a sensitive being and if you are not prepared for the tasks you are taking on, you could end up feeling exposed and helpless. The ancestor guidance that is coming to you now is a reminder that you have a warrior's heart and you have it within you to be more prepared and focused than you have been recently. So have a strategy in place and then let your guides support you as you move forward. All right, you guys, that is your forecast. Sorry about that. I hope this makes sense. Please leave me a like, share, comment, subscribe, and um, tune in tomorrow to see where this goes. I'm kind of excited. It's interesting. I feel like changes are afoot, people. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.